I'm going to talk about uh, UML class diagrams earnestly, formally. Uh, so uh, UML uh, stands for uh, Unified Modeling Language. And uh, it's, a, um, uh, it's a language, it's a visual language that is uh, used by engineers to be able to describe systems, how they interact, the data structures. Uh, and it's useful for folks that uh, you know, don't um, are not necessarily uh, knowledgeable of each other's uh, infrastructures, uh, but nevertheless have a common language, right? So the folks that uh, are, you know, database experts can talk to folks that are developers, uh, regardless of whether you know I'm, I, I love Python or Java or C Sharp or whatever. Right? We can have a common language to to describe the uh, the system. Uh, it has quite a, a few number of types of, of diagrams. Uh, of which we're only going to look about two of them, uh, two types, of, three types of diagrams actually. Uh, we're going to look at class diagrams, sequence diagrams, and um, use case analysis diagrams. Okay, the um, the I mean, but there's tons of other diagrams that we're not going to even consider. Um, but uh, it's uh, it's object oriented, uh, in that um, and it describes entities uh, and their identities and and the, and the attributes that make those uh, those uh, uh, those entities and the data types and uh, the, the carnalities of those attributes. Um, and a class is a, it, um, represents the, describes the structure of, a, of objects, of particular instances of, uh, of, that, uh, of that particular uh, class. Um, it has a name. Uh, usually it's a, a singular noun. Uh, that's, a, that's a little bit different from tables. Tables typically are plural nouns. Uh, whereas uh, class classes are typically singular nouns, um, or it could be a noun phrase as well. Uh, usually, it's a, ca a camel cased, you know, capitalized, and then camel cased as a naming convention. Uh, usually, in, uh, in in tables, uh, it's uh, the, the casing is irrelevant. Uh, but if we use um, since it, uh, since it's casing sensitive, uh, usually we we either choose pa uh, all caps or lower caps, and we use underscore. Between the um, between the the the, the, the nouns, um, attributes have their their data types, uh, and even though classes uh, usually have a part where they describe the methods, uh, uh, the behavior of the of the classes, we're not going to be um, we're not going to we're not going to be using that kind of feature in our class. Are we going to be we're going to be interested more mostly on the the data structure, right? This, uh, how does what is the form of the data? Not much on the behavior. Uh, so here's an example, class, uh, class diagrams. We have uh, the name of the class, uh, the attributes, whether they're, uh, uh, whether they're public or private or protected, uh, you know, the plus, the hash, and the minus. Uh, and we have the, the, each, each attribute having its own data type. Uh, and down below, we have the methods, but we're not going to be using that in this class. Right? So, so we, can, we can skip over. Uh, the behaviors of the classes, right? so you can leave that empty. Um, the uh, the attributes uh, have a name and the data type. Uh, some of those uh, attributes can have uh, multiplicity. Uh, here we have a, a date of birth uh, zero or one. How could I not have a date of birth? <laughs> um, uh, hmm. <laughs> I'm I'm not born yet. Um, hope nobody aborts me. Um, uh, or the uh, multiplicity, uh, saying that you know how many of something you might you might have. Um, you know, most common is just exactly one uh, or many. Uh, and um, also um, the, uh, the 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 language, the UML language, allows us to declare our own concepts. Right, if the language reaches a particular uh, um, um, that it can, we, we can't find a way that we can represent a particular idea. Uh, then it allows us to expand and and and, and describe our own concepts using uh, what are called stereotypes. Uh, the most common stereotype that is uh, commonly used in the UML is enumerations. And enumerations, even though it looks like a class diagram, like a class, but it's not. Right? There's no attributes here. Uh, so these these values, horror, comedy, sci-fi, sci fantasy, these are not attributes, right? They 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 don't they don't have a data type, right? Uh, the data type is movie genre. Movie genre is the data type, 
Uh, and we're here, we're specifying all the possible values that movie genre could have. Uh, and then you can declare all the variables of type movie genre, right? And, uh, and the only possible values of that, of that uh, variable can only be these four values, yes? Uh, just like we can declare something as an integer, we're saying that, well, the possible values of that variable are all the numbers between minus infinity and plus infinity. Right here, we're saying, well, we only have four, not infinite numbers. Just these four are the possible values of movie genre. Um, uh, we, we, can, we can also uh, um, obviously specify generalization and specialization using uh, the, uh, the arrow here, uh, the empty arrow. Uh, a couple other things that uh, um, we can specify, other stereotype examples are we can declare a class as abstract, uh, meaning that uh, we don't intend to ever have an actual instance of this class. Uh, it's only there to capture the fact that other uh, concrete classes, as opposed to abstract classes, concrete classes can inherit those those fields. Uh, and it's common between these two images and headings. They all have widths and heights and whatnot. Okay. Um, and uh, as we'll see later, and somebody was suggesting, uh, oftentimes uh, one of the one of the um, um, one of the inconvenience. Uh, uh, facts about spreading, implementing uh, uh, specialization and generalization across multiple tables. Right? One of the one of the uh, challenges is that you know if I if I want to if want to represent a particular instance of this class, I need to join two tables. Yes. Uh, so imagine you had a you know, fairly deep generalization, right, where you have a long inheritance chain, right, and you want to you know, represent, you know, a record uh, and you want to extract a record from one table that's way down in the inheritance chain, you would have to join, right, all the tables in that chain. Very, very expensive, right? Um, so oftentimes a, an alternative representation is to have just one table, right, and then and then squish all the, uh, you know, flatten the hierarchy, hier the hierarchy tree, the, uh, the inheritance tree into one single table. And, and we'll talk about that. Uh, it's mostly for performance issues. Uh, database managers hate that because it's an it's a uh, it's a denormalized representation. Uh, folks, you know, data models they, they prefer this uh, a, a a normalized representation. So we'll talk about that a little later. Uh, here's a here's a, an attribute that's multi-value. Here's tags. Uh, so this is multiple strings, or presumably it's an array of tags. Um, that you know, some database support that where you can have you know, array data structures. Um, uh, associations usually we uh, we also uh, uh, document the the uh, you know we are verbose explaining you know on either side of the classes what kind, what is the relationship uh, that uh, is being uh, uh, is it being described between two classes you know who's the writer what they're doing you know write, is written by you know, from the point of view of the class, right? How are they participating in this association? Um, and uh, it allows us to, you know, read it out loud. You know, an author writes a book or a book is written by an author, right? Starting from either one, other side of the relationship. Uh, multiplicities allow you to capture you know, how many are participating in the relationship. Uh, you know, many to many here. Um, Uh, association classes that we we written we we uh, talked about it earlier you know two two classes and a and a mapping uh, class that relates many authors with many books uh, and then uh, you know a, a history of all the edits that that particular author has done in a particular book uh, aggregation with an open diamond and in composition with the closed diamond we already discussed that and right that's a, a formal description of class. Hi everyone, Jose here. Uh, please remember to subscribe and like the video. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. Thank you.